Yeah, day there. Once again, viewers, this is your mate Kamikaze78 here, coming to you guys with some more Planet Side 2 content. Today, guys, we're going to take a step back and look at the battles on Araxis from a slightly different perspective. From the perspective of logistics, and more specifically, again, spawning and maintaining those spawns. Planet Side is unique in the sense that fights can just abruptly end at any given point in time. You know, in games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, Destiny, whatever. Most matches will have you constantly respawning until a team reaches the required score to win. In Planet Side, yes, defenders will always have access to their spawn room, but attackers are always going to need to maintain their own spawn options, and a fight will only last as long as spawn options remain for both sides. So with that said today, I want to go over what tools you can use to maintain a fight, and more specifically, how to use them and what you should be considering when making use of them. And just to also clarify, we're not going to go over spawn rooms in this video. They're pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be going the other tools that you can use to maintain a fight. And I feel like to get the ball rolling, we need to quickly go over what the spawning options are in the game. What are the tools of the trade for keeping an offensive rolling or to change the tide of a failing defense? Firstly, we have the Sundra. This bad boy is probably the most commonly utilized asset in the game for maintaining an offensive. Nine out of ten times when you're looking at the spawn options at a base, one of them, or two of them, are very likely to be a Sundra. Sundras are relatively bulky vehicles, but their size makes them easy targets for C4 attacks and armor columns. But by placing them in smart locations, you will improve not only their survivability, but also the survivability of your spawning troops. More on that shortly. Secondly, we have the Spawn Beacon. Now, this is a tool that can be placed by any member of a squad, and when you place it, you will endure a 300 second cooldown before the same member can place another Spawn Beacon. If a squad member places a new beacon, the previous one that was active will be destroyed, so communication as to how you rotate beacon responsibilities throughout your squad is really critical. When you spawn on this device, you will drop in via a drop pod, allowing for certain classes to attack in ways that were not previously available. Do not discount these devices from your play and make sure to deal with them quickly if you see an enemy beacon. It often means that you're about to have an entire squad drop right on your noggin. Lastly, we have one of the more powerful additions to the Planet Side 2 construction system, the router. The router is a tool that you gain access to via building a base and using a routing spire. Having a router active will allow any ally to spawn on its location at a slower rate than other spawning options. But the benefit to this is the fact that you can place this router anywhere on the map, even in no deploy zones and no build zones. It's a very powerful tool and requires you to maintain Cordium levels in the base that the routing spy is present in to keep it going, but routers can play absolutely critical roles in changing the flow of a base battle. So as you can see here, we've got some options around that allow for you to really change the flow of battle or actually make a battle happen in the first place. But there are some key principles that can be applied to every spawn option in the game. And I can't make the first one any clearer than what I'm about to say have backup spawn options. The amount of times I've seen an attack falter due to only one spawn option being present is insane. You could honestly have a serious amount of troops on a capture point and be less than a minute away from capturing only for your spawns to fall apart out from under you and kill your momentum entirely. By having an additional Sundra or even a router as a backup somewhere, you can just provide that extra momentum you may need to keep that point hold going until the last second. So having backup spawn options options is pretty important just for the sake of keeping a fight going, but it can also be a really powerful move in actually capturing a base. Allow me to explain. How many times have you guys been fighting at, say, Quartz Ridge Camp and had a Sundra parked in this garage? The whole faction tries to get through this one tunnel and it just turns into a big old grenade spam mess that gets you absolutely nowhere. The amount of times I've seen this exact situation play out, I wouldn't be able to count on my two hands and two feet for that matter. But then you have a new Sundra deploy either here or here offering a flanking route for infantry and then suddenly the battle changes a bit. Having alternative spawning options is critical to breaking stalemates and this can also be applied in defensive situations. If you see your team hard locked into your spawn room 
fall back to the previous territory and bring a new Sundra up as an alternative. Creating a new flank that sees 48 troops pouring out of it is not only going to get the enemy off guard and will allow for you to maybe even capture back that capture point, but it will certainly take pressure off the spawn room, allowing those still in there to push out for a two-prong attack. It's very powerful. So now, let's just say that you're wanting to get a fight going at a base and you're driving a Sundra up. There is, of course, another very important thing to consider. Where the hell are you going to put it in the first place? You know, when you're choosing a place to deploy a spawn option, know that your choice could very well change the tide of battle as a whole. You know, you need to consider what objective your spawn aims to achieve, how perilous is the journey for infantry to reach that objective, and how easy is it for enemies to lock down that spawn option's troops from making any ground. Let's take Crossroads Watchtower as an example and have a bit of a look at this base and its layout. Say you're driving a Sundra up from the west with the intention of starting a fight. Do you place the Sundra here or here? Well, the A spot potentially leaves you susceptible to armor attack from the road and air attack without much obstruction, and people on the tower can get a cleaner angle on approaching infantry. In the B spot, the Sundra is undercover and is going to not only be harder to kill from an aerial perspective, but is also going to allow infantry to have more cover to advance with. It's a stronger offensive play overall. Now, you have a hold on the C point, but you ain't going to capture a base, or this base in particular, with just one capture point. Infantry are simply not going to make it to the B point with this being their only spawn option. They need to cross open ground past an enemy spawn point which is elevated and heavily fortified. So it's too perilous to accomplish anything. So do we place a Sundra for the B point in this spot or this spot? Well, in this situation, option B gives better cover to the Sundra itself with it being undercover. But it also creates a more perilous journey for infantry, which will make them more difficult to approach the objective. So it's going to depend a little bit more on the situation at hand. Does the enemy have much armor and air presence? Does that Sundra need that extra cover? Are the infantry in the tower running a lot of snipers that can pop exposed targets? Or can you get your Sundra down to a slightly more exposed position and give allies the better approach? These are all things that you need to consider to make the most of any offensive. You should also also consider terrain, the actual running distance between Sundra and objective. If an enemy has a considerably shorter run time to get to an objective than what you do, your spawn option isn't going to be nearly as powerful as theirs. You know, if an enemy kills an ally of yours and they don't get revived by a medic and they're forced to then endure a 20 second run to the objective where an enemy is only, you know, enduring a 10 second run to the objective, then they're going to have a much better ability to keep pressure on a capture point or on an objective no matter how many of them you kill. This is something to consider. There's also been a hilarious amount of times that I've seen a badly placed spawn ruin the momentum of a fight. And while I always encourage finding creative new locations for Sunderers and Routers to create new flanks, consider that not everyone playing this game is going to be a mountain goat at heart. Needing to cross difficult terrain is going to really put the dampener on the effectiveness of an assault. You know, putting a Sundra up against a cliff that you need to really know the movement system of planet side to traverse is not always going to be the best possible situation. Alright, so there's some basic level theory, if you will, for creating healthy spawn options for a battle. Now, obviously, we could spend hours going over bases and looking at what the best spawn options at each area are. And if you guys want to see some more base guide orientated videos, do let me know in the comment section down below and we can discuss it further. But for now, I challenge everyone to go out and get a Sundra and just start looking at no deploy zones, the cover that's available and how you could impact the battlefield for the better with a well-placed spawn. But we can't do this video justice without quickly looking at the router in a little more detail. As we said before, the router is a device that can be placed anywhere as long as you have Quartium in the source silo. This device, however, can be destroyed easily with small arms fire and concentrated explosives. So one thing you need to make sure happens whenever you put a router down is make sure the router is defended. Now when I say this, I don't mean put infantry on it. You're going to have enough infantry spawning out of it anyway. There's no point in leaving people back there to defend it. What I do mean by that is put a couple of hard light barriers and Spitfire turrets around it to ensure that grenades have a harder time rolling onto it and damaging it, and light assaults have a hard time getting to it without at least alerting your Spitfire turrets. The Spitfire turrets will at least deter them or warn you of their presence so you can deal with them directly. However, the router's primary downside is the slower spawn speed, as we mentioned earlier, so what does this mean? Well, let's draw a bit of a comparison here. If you start losing troops while mainly running off of a 
Sundry, you're going to have a faster turnaround time for those troops respawning in and getting back to the fight. With the router having a much longer turnaround time, its power really comes from the initial rush of infantry it can flood to a location at first without enemies knowing about it. You know, you put a router down in an unexpected location then have a platoon rush through it, it's the best way to make use of it. But thanks to the longer respawn time, it is key that you have medics in your squad keeping things moving in your favour. If people die and then have to go through a 16 second respawn timer, that's a lot less efficient than having a Sundry nearby instead, even if the router is right on the point. So having a solid amount of medics in there, ensuring that allies don't have to go through that respawn timer, will make it so that you have a more consistent flow of infantry on point after that initial surprise attack onto that capture point. A router will not maintain a force that is being pushed in on its own, and once again, it's best used as an initial break into a point. As far as the spawn beacon is concerned, it's pretty easy. Put it in hard to reach locations and high locations. EMPs are one of the most effective way to take out a spawn beacon, so putting it in a position where infiltrators are going to have a hard time reaching that is going to be key to its survival and its life longevity. And as we said before, just make sure that you're communicating with your squad. You want to make sure your beacons last as long as possible so that your squad always has a constant rotation of them going. A very effective way to use a beacon as well is coordinate a drop. Someone puts down a beacon and then an entire squad drops in at once. That's a really, really solid way of a sort of like a shock trooper kind of tactic. It works quite well. And guys, with all that said, that kind of concludes everything I wanted to discuss in today's video surrounding uh, Planet Side 2 and spawning options. We can always go more in depth about this sort of stuff, but I wanted to give new players as to how maintaining an offensive in Planet Side 2 actually works and how they too can look at learning about maintaining spawns of their own and contributing to the logistics of the fight. It's a very, very important, you know, way to go. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to back in that like button. It's greatly appreciated. Every little bit of support goes a long way to help out the channel. And if you find yourself back in the like button and you're new to the channel, consider back in that subscribe button whilst you're at it. And as for always, guys, social media links, including my Twitch channel where you can catch me live most days, will be linked in the description down below as well. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.